Welcome back to the Greg Compound. Today we're going to be making some deer jerky snack sticks. I'm going to show you how easy this is to do. I'm going to try to keep this video short so some of it's already been done. I'll explain it as we go. Hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos and we'll get right to it. Alright, to start here, what I, want to, what I want to show you guys is, this is the ingredients that I use. I use the Eastman Outdoors Jerky Cure and Seasoning Hickory. It has the curing salts you need and the flavorings. I usually cut the water in half off the instructions and substitute about, uh, and I do 10 pounds at a time, by the way. This box right here will do 5 pounds. I use two boxes and mix up 10 pounds of ground at the same time. And I will take one cup of the water and use three quarter cups of the Worcestershire sauce and top it off with about a quarter cup of the hickory liquid smoke. Then it is mixed up in a lug like so with the water. That's what it looks like when it's all mixed up. Alright, and that's that ground meat has 10% beef fat in it when I ground it. It has been frozen and thawed out and mixed up left to marinate overnight in the refrigerator. And then I shoot it out into another lug like that. I'm using the Lem 19 millimeter smoked snack stick casings. This is a collagen casing. Uh, works out real good for snack sticks, breakfast sausage, so forth. And what I've done is I've bought a stuffing tube and hooked it on my Lem jerky gun. You guys at Lem ought to be paying me for this. So now I'll uh, just show you how easy it is to, to get all this stuff done and work with. Alright, what you want to do, if you can, before you put your casing on your stuffer, go ahead and get the meat, and it helps if you have a wet hand. Keeps the meat from sticking this bad. Get some of the meat. You want to roll it into like a little, a little tube shaped roll so you can stuff it down in the stuffer pretty easily. You want to try to keep as much of the air out as you possibly can. down in there. Just kind of shake it down in there. And the, believe it or not, if you have a little smaller going in, it'll slide down easier. I know, I know, I can hear all the jokes now. And just fill that up about as good as you can. Here's one other thing you need to know. Keep all your meat cold. This meat should be good and cold. If it starts getting warm, quit. Put it back in the refrigerator. Leave it for an hour and come back to it. So when you're done, you've got it full up and you're ready to put on your casing. For putting on your casing, there's not a whole lot of this left. Again, the 19 millimeter collagen casing. Just open it up, slide it over the end of your stuffer and push it all the way to the end. What you're doing is you're just continually filling up this tube, so I can get it better. Slipping that over there like a big long sock. The more you get on there, the less you'll have to change this as you go, okay? Put it on good and tight. When you get near the end, what I'll do is take a knife, pull out a little extra, cut that off nice and gently. Nice even cut. No big deal. So you got that in. And just twist that down, tie a little knot in it. Mm -hmm. Twisty, twisty, twisty. Maybe some more twisty, twisty, twisty. So it's like that. Just tie a little knot in it. Okay, slide that up all the way so it's like that. And then. And assemble your jerky gun. Now when you're assembling this thing, sometimes you'll see if you get it too full like I just did, you gotta really work to get that thing started. 
and then some meat will come out. It'll start shooting immediately, right out the end there. Not a big deal. So once you got it ready like that, you're ready to start shooting. Alright, so I got everything set up. Jerky gun's primed, loaded, and ready. What you do is you take and you hold this in with just your thumb and forefinger. You want to hold a little pressure on this casing as it comes off and start squeezing the gun and just start gently at first. If you hold too much pressure with your fingers, you'll burst the casing. And then you got to kind of start over as far as the knot's concerned and a little messy. So you, you don't want to bust that case. So just a little at a time. Just keep squeezing and guiding and it'll fill that casing right on up. Using a big lug like this, this is basically a little two dollar plastic dish tray that I picked up at Walmart. I got a bunch of them that I use for meat handling, keep them good and clean and they work great for anything deer meat. So you just keep on shooting, shooting, shooting. And you can see this really doesn't take very long at all. And that's just about it for that tube. The stuffer is empty. I've got to refill it and we'll come back when I've got all of that done. And that is what it looks like when you get all your casing stuffed. Now we're going to trim it to length so it'll fit on my grill. I'm going to do it on the grill this time. You can do it on the oven also in cookie sheets or on cookie sheets, but I'm going to use the grill this time. More of an experiment than anything. And I'm going to show you another way with some extra meat that I have on how you can do jerky if you have a dehydrator. Be right back. Alright, in many ways, this is the easiest way to make deer jerky or any jerky. You can also use regular beef. If you get a good deal on, on some, find some marked down, you can use the same recipe with beef as I do with the venison. I switched out the tip for the flat jerky tip and this is one of my dehydrators I have and you just simply shoot that out onto your racks don't block the hole with it and like I said this is a lot less work than the casing but we've got to where we like the casing a little bit better I just ran out anyway so some of this is going to end up being flat jerky sticks so just squirt that out fill your trays up don't block the hole. I like to get as much on a tray as I can. I can get almost the entire 10 pounds on this one dehydrator uh, if I choose to do it that way. I've only got a couple pounds to put on it left. You can see this actually takes less time because you're not fooling with casing and all that other jazz. And I gotta refill my jerky gun, but you get the idea. Now that I've got the dehydrator full, what I'm gonna do now is take these snack sticks and we'll cut them to the length of this cookie sheet for the most part, because that happens to be the, about the length of my grill. So when you're gonna cut it, let me move this camera around so I can show you a little better. When you're gonna cut the stuff, just kind of take it easy, let the knife do the work. And don't cut towards your finger. Good sharp knife helps, you don't want to tear that casing. And it'll cut very nicely. Just like that. You're going to have some shorter pieces, so that's fine too. So get everything cut up so it'll fit in onto your cookie sheet. You can use a drying rack like this. That works great in an oven. If you're going to use a cookie sheet, use a drying rack above it so the air can circulate around it. On a grill, it doesn't matter, the air will circulate anyway, and I'll get back, come back when I get all these cut. So there you have about, I don't know, eight, eight and a half pounds of jerky sticks there. Dehydrator's loaded with what's left. When you have a dehydrator, get that plugged in there. There we go. You always want to make sure that your top trays or where your food is if you don't have a full dehydrator and always use the whole thing um, you know don't 
take some of the trays out if you don't have everything full. Just leave them empty, put the food up near the top, and let her go. Now I'm going to get the grill ready and get these on. Alright, I've got my Royal Tailgater model pellet grill going. I have it on the smoke setting, I've let it warm up. Now I'm going to put the jerky sticks on, just kind of move them to the back. I did oil my grates also with olive oil just to try to keep them from sticking. You want to leave enough room in between to roll them part way through your cook here. Just like you would if they were in an oven. Give you a better shot. This will give you a little bit better camera angle of that. See what I'm doing here. Just filling it up. That's about as much as I want to put on there. So that's full. I'm going to leave this on smoke for a couple hours. That's around 200 degrees. And we'll come back here in a little bit. Put the rest back in the, in the refrigerator to keep it cold. Just a quick check on things. Been going now for about, about an hour and a half or so. Come here my little thermometer. Yeah, I'm a long way off. You want to get these up to about 160 or so degrees. I'm at 120 now. 121. So that's got a right good ways to go yet. I'm going to turn that heat up just a little bit here. That's the last of the jerky right there done. I run it up to about 165, 170 degrees with a thermometer. And that's what it looks like. So now you can cut it up and bag it and enjoy it. Now we're back at my dehydrator. Check on these. This has been going now probably for about seven hours, maybe eight. And it's getting pretty close. It's uh, still a little bit gooier than it needs to be. So it's probably going to be another couple hours. The dehydrator takes the longest. But it's a great way to make jerky. A um, lot less work, but it takes a lot longer time. So that's it. That's two different ways to make jerky using your venison, your beef, whichever you want. As far as temperatures, if you use your oven for the snack sticks or even your jerky, set it about 200, maybe 225 and go that way. I use my pellet grill on the smoke setting which runs realistically right at 200, maybe a little less and after about an hour and a half, two hours on smoke, I switched it to medium which runs it up about 250, 275. Got my temperature on the snack sticks up to about 165 or over. Uh, you can go up to about 180, 185 before it starts really drying out on you and you don't want to do that. On your jerky, on the dehydrator, you want to run that till it's kind of a rubbery, dry consistency but not too dry. You'll just have to experiment with that. Part of the fun of doing it yourself. So grind up that venison, about 10% beef fat. There's a lot of different recipes you can use from Eastman Outdoors and a couple other places. Walmart sells it. Bass Pro Shops. You can really experiment and it's a great way to use that deer meat. It's delicious. Everybody will love it. Um, just a good way to do it. So that said, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and do it right now. Hit like, hit subscribe, check out some of my other videos and I'll see you next time.